Hello, my beautiful, queefy little slumber party listeners. It's your host, Tim Murray, back, back, back again. And I'm here having a slumber party, as I often do, with drag queens, Broadway stars, and comedians. And today, I have a dear, dear friend on the pod. But before we bring her in, I want you to, if you are watching this, subscribe to this channel, Mama. And if you're listening to it, make sure you're subscribed on iHeartRadio Broadway. Because you're going to want to get these good, good guests. Like today's guest who, I mean, if she was on this pod, then it would be amazing. And I hope that her screen isn't frozen because pretty soon I'm going to ask her to bring it on. Yes, that's right. We got a Broadway star in the house. And also, I asked asked her how she wanted to be introduced and she said, "Uh, how about Queen? Queen, (laughs) please welcome star of stage and television, including the new show Heels on Stars, Queen Ryan Redman. Hi, my fellow queen. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Just two queens queens chatting. Giving a little chit chat. Exactly. Um, How are you? I'm fantastic now that I'm seeing your face. I Um, miss you so much. It's been too long. I don't it's like when you're in California. Time. Yeah, should I quit? Yeah, quit California. <laughs> should I go cold turkey at California? I'm going to get yeah. the California patch. And exactly. just not do it just anymore. Just shake it. Just shake it. No, I'm just kidding. You seem like you're thriving. But I'm good. I'm just I'm chilling down here in ATL, the hot Atlanta, where the play is play. Um, and yeah, I've just been shooting a TV show, getting some family time in um and just kind of hanging out down here until Broadway gets back and up and running up and a running because I mean not to toot your horn right off the bat but you're a Broadway gal I'm a Broadway gal (laughs) but Broadway's not happening so I'm like let me just go do this little tv thing You said, oh, I simply can't do my Broadway gigs right now. Let me just hop onto the television. If Broadway's not available, (laughs) pivot, pivot, Pivot turn. (laughs) I met you on a train on the way to a party into deep, deep Brooklyn many years ago. The first time we met? I think that was the first time we met because. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were on our way to this party like so far. It was Emma Hunton's um, like birthday or something. Yes, yes. And it was yes. like she at the time lived so far into Brooklyn, and she I really was, did. I, I think actually did. Farthest I've ever been into Brooklyn. That's the farthest I've ever been anywhere in my life. That's the <laughs> longest trip I've ever taken. Thanks, Emma. <laughs> it was a 22-hour flight. I didn't know her at the time, but my friends did. So they were like, you know, come with us. And we were on the train playing the Pitch Perfect game, which is you start to sing a lyric of a song, and then the other person is honestly the most fun thing that's all ever happened. All coming back, it's all coming back. <laughs> now, do it now. Yeah, we're playing. Oh, Absolutely. Yep. We, we just, we jumped in. We jumped in. <laughs> <laughs> we were stealing the word from each other, being so loud. And then like, I saw you. Annoying corner, every single person. Every single person. I saw you out of the corner of my eye, like clock us. And then when we got off the train, you were like, hey, are <laughs> you guys going to the same party? I'm, going- <laughs> I'm like, just going to take a wild guess. Are you theater nerds? <laughs> gay nerds? <laughs> party and we were like yes you were like okay I don't know where the hell I am can we all go together and then we all walked into the party together and we've been fast friends ever since and that was it that's all she wrote that's all she wrote we also we shared a new year's eve together oh where you put sparkles in my hair oh my god was that the time or was that the the next time wait what was that they were like sparkle (laughs) extensions or something no they were like little jewels that you could like um like straight use a straightening iron and like <laughs> and like basically glue to your hair and I told Tim I was like make sure everybody notices that I have sparkles in my hair like if we're talking just be like oh my god look at her sparkles because I wanted everyone to know because I love them so much and I'm apparently that vain 
And we would, I mean, we would be like mid deep conversation. Like somebody would be yeah. like, oh my God, I, I, yeah, I haven't seen you in like three years. And I'd be like, holy crap, look at the sparkles in her hair. Look at them. There's priorities here, folks. Priorities. Absolutely. <laughs> and then we also shared the most traumatizing evening of both of our lives <laughs> together. The 2016 election, we were indeed <laughs> together at your apartment. And, and then, I think that bonded us pretty deeply as well. Yeah, I was going to say, like, if you can't come together after that, I don't know <laughs> what you can. But then we got to up. very sweetly share this one this year by texting each other being like, I cannot believe we Like, it. remember four years ago? That was one of the most insane experiences of my life. I was feeling on cloud nine. I had voted that day and I walked to your place with a giant bottle of champagne and we were like, we're about to elect the first female president. I know I made Hillary cupcakes. I like uh, had a Hillary shirt. (laughs) We were like, we got this. We got this in the bag. We were having the time of our lives. And then like about an hour went by and it was like, it felt like the world went into slow motion. Yeah. We were like, this is not how we expected the night to go. Something isn't right here. Something isn't right is. here. <laughs> Literally, thank you, bring it on. Like, something is not right here. It was. Like yeah. a, hearing a ticking in an unmarked package. <laughs> that was one of the lyrics of that song, which I love. It's like hearing... Wait, what is it? Like right here. I don't know what it is. I don't know. That show was, was 10 that? years ago almost. That's crazy. Crazy. Was that experience wild to be like as your Broadway debut? Yeah, I mean, it's it's all I knew. So I kind of was just like rolling with the punches, but it was like time of my life, you know? We just from development to closing was like three years and just living my 2019 to 21 22 year old life damn <laughs> originating in a Broadway show and like it was crazy crazy and you guys didn't know right like you were on tour is this correct you guys were on tour and then when you were on tour they were like by the way we're going to Broadway yeah well we we did um like a nine month national tour and we you know you knowing we were going on tour like we had an inkling that that was the goal but no one ever confirmed and it was kind of just like okay we're gonna use this tour to build up momentum and just like you know get the word out and blah 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 and so every time we had amazing producers Mike Isaacson and Kristen Kasky and Megan Larsh and they like every once in a while they'd come out to a city and we'd be like guys this is this is the time that they're gonna tell us we're going to Broadway (laughs) And then they wouldn't. They'd just be like, hey guys, popping in, see how you guys are doing. (laughs) And then finally on our last stop in Toronto, um, this was like, I think May of 2012. They finally came again and we were like, please. We had, I think we had maybe four weeks left of tour. And we, you know, we had like half the company was cheerleaders. We were like, uh, do we need to like go home to Texas and like, <laughs> you know, like no, no one knew it was happening. And then they came and they were like, guess what? We're going to Broadway. You have a week off after tour. And then we start rehearsals for Broadway. Oh my God. They really waited to the last minute on y'all. Mm-hmm. And, 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 <laughs> I'm just picturing them walking in being like, so we have a huge announcement subway sandwiches for everyone today in the break room okay have a great last show <laughs> right and then slowly walking back in and being like just kidding we have another huge announcement diet oh cokes gosh. for everyone in the break room <laughs> that would be what you would do as a producer <laughs> that is exactly right. <laughs> and you'd I've film never, it all i was sure would i put it on youtube yeah. i'd be like this uh-huh. oh, watch me watch me go have you ever seen summer heights high oh my god yes jimay when- when Chris Lilly, as Mr. G, pulls them all into the classroom and he's like, so I have a huge announcement for you all. You're not in the show. You didn't make the cast. You're not in the show. Gosh, he is a genius. So funny. What, is Do- he doing anything right now? What? Where? Where? Where can I see him? He got pretty canceled for like doing some definitely bad oh. uh, 
stuff. But then he came back with um, Lunatics. This that was on Netflix. They started like like right before the pandemic, I would say. Mm, and that, okay. And that one was like a was better. He like I feel like learned his lesson about uh, political correctness and how to make comedy work and still be politically correct. And gotcha. it's pretty good. It's like okay, okay. One of the one of the characters is like literally like a nine foot tall um, college freshman. <laughs> that's like the bit is that her legs are literally like <laughs> six six feet um oh uh, and that character is really good and then there's like an ex um adult movie star that collects trinkets okay. and that character is also pretty good lunatics is good i i highly okay. recommend it, it takes a little while put to put on my list okay yeah. it's not as good as, as summer heights but like kind of nothing is and then you've right, oh, like, like how can you how can you get any better than that I mean Jamea and Mr. G are really just nothing makes me laugh harder than that no nothing no puck you miss puck you with the pee <laughs> oh you fought it you fought it miss. <laughs> what are your favorite comedies or comedy people oh my gosh my favorite comedies are comedy people I mean let's see I love Amy Schumer obviously uh. I love Tiffany Haddish. I love, uh, uh, obviously, my girl Melissa McCarthy. Uh, um, uh, I, who else do I love? Can I tell you a crazy okay. thing about Melissa McCarthy that Drew Drogi told me? Drew Drogi yeah. is this amazing LA um, comedian, and mm-hmm. he d- like did Groundlings with her. And oh, really? He said that when they were doing the Bridesmaids movie, Kristen Wiig and I'm gonna get in so much trouble for this, but I can't remember the name of the woman who wrote it with her, who's also did Barb and Star. Oh, um, yes. What is her name? Did you see Barb and Star? I haven't seen it yet. That's, oh, that's Ryan. on my list. That oh, I, it's right up my alley. Like that. If that is a movie that explains me, like that is my movie. That I, need, is I know I need to the watch hardest it. Hardest I've laughed in a really long time. It's so so good. It's okay. every bit as good you as have you to, hope. It's not rentable yet, right? No, you can. But rent it's it. worth the purchase. Oh, okay. It's absolutely worth. It. I think it's twenty dollars. Putting it on my list now. Honestly, completely worth the price. But she, I apparently, you know, she had been in some TV shows. She was on Gilmore Girls and stuff, but she wasn't like the star that she is now. So they right. were like, they were like, this role has to be Melissa McCarthy. And apparently, the producers of the studio or whatever was like, no, like we need to go with like a more famous person. And they were like, you don't understand. Like people line up around the block to see her do improv shows. Like you need to put her in this movie because she is- Can you imagine if she wasn't in that film? No, she got an Oscar nomination for a comedy movie. Melissa McCarthy got an Oscar nomination for Bridesmaids? She got an Oscar nomination How do I not know this? Isn't that wild? People didn't ever talk about it. (laughs) She (sighs) fully got nominated for Best Supporting Actress for Bridesmaids. What an icon. What an icon. Truly. I just like somebody please let me play her sister or like her Uh, her like I'm too old to be her daughter but just something let me be near her let me be near her (laughs) let me be near her and Amy Schumer have you watched the Amy Schumer documentary on HBO of course that was shocked me to my core I mean I was expecting to be shocked to my core but like I just, I, just, love her. I just love, I just love how she's just, she's like, I'm going to tell you every damn thing. Yeah. She's come su- such an open book. So inspiring. I was so yeah. inspired by the, by the whole watching somebody build their show like that and just do it how they wanted to do it was so cool. And she, also, it's, I can't even talk about it. She's so cool. Be like a total blind spot man, but I just had no idea the pregnancy was like that. I was like, what? It's not, it's not a walk in the park. It doesn't seem like a cakewalk at all. Yeah, it seems nope. hard. It seems it's, difficult. Yeah. But like watching stuff like that, I'm like, Ugh, I don't know <laughs> if I want to do that. No, thank the you. Women are warriors. Like it's so really? crazy. It's so immortal. Crazy. That seemed immortal. Really like immortal to me. I was like, what? You're going to do what now? Vomiting every single come a- time? Come again? Come again? Come again? Come again? <laughs> yeah, no. Amy Schumer. Love, 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 love. Who else? 
I mean, obviously all those ladies, but like I've been Everybody recently matters. watching a lot of Dana Carvey, who, uh, you know, obviously an icon. Um, what, and what the, Dana Carvey the are you Gilda, watching? Well, like, like I just watched the Gilda Radner documentary. I've heard it's really good. Which, oh, so good. It's, it made me cry so much. Um, uh, so that's, that was recently in my head because they were like, obviously, peas in a pod. Um, Have you ever seen Master of Disguise? No, his movie, I mean, <laughs> this no. really weird like Adam Sandler era movie, and <sighs> my brother and I quote it all the time because it's so stupid. At one point, he's literally like walking around pretending to be. I think he's like at a party or something, pretending to be someone talking to a caterer, and he's like, "Uh, the caterer is like, do you want a finger sandwich?" And he's like, "No, I want Neapolitan ice cream." And the guy's <laughs> like, "We don't have that." And he's like, "Neapolitan ice cream, a uh, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, greatest thing in the world, Neapolitan ice cream. You don't have it." <laughs> Such a funny line to me. <laughs> greatest oh, thing man. in the world. The greatest and, thing in the world. And you don't have it? And you don't have it? Oh. No, I need, um, to, I need to watch that for sure. What was it like doing the Broadway musical Frozen? What was it like? It feels like a million years ago <laughs> now. Um, oh my gosh, it was wild just from the moment I got the appointment to being like was this a mistake um <laughs> I literally thought my agent sent the wrong email to somebody for the appointment and I was like you were looking for Ryan Blumen right boy <laughs> Ryan Blumen <laughs> Ryan Blumend. Ryan um Blumend. Blum- yeah no but like the the breakdown was like baritone the <laughs> song was in the male key I was like uh this don't seem right um for those of you who don't know who are listening to this ryan played olaf in oh, yes. frozen on broadway which was yes. traditionally josh gad in the movie and was a male role before that but that's so yeah. cool they were like especially disney such like a huge 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 company changing things up and messing with gender norms i think is so awesome yeah i think they just wanted some some lady blood up in there and there's no reason that olaf needed to be played by a man um you know it's a cartoon character think about how many amazing cartoon characters that are men that are voiced by women like Bart Simpson Woody Woodpecker um all these the Rugrats the Rugrats um so I just thought of it as like you know giving my voice to him but um it was crazy I had to learn how to operate a puppet which is something I never thought I'd be doing in my entire life um I it, but it was so awesome just to be a part of that entire franchise and see so many kids seeing their first Broadway show ever and meeting at the stage door and um, just being a chunk of that Disney, you know, history is so, so cool and something I will never take for granted. It was just really awesome and really hard, but really awesome. That sounds I mean, truly amazing. If I were in that show, I would be backstage every single night during Let It Go, just like, just eyes pressed up as far as I could get into the wings watching, I mean, that unbelievable quick change. But also when she takes the clip out of her hair and just like, flack, 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 the braid. Yeah. She's like, this needs to be let go as well. Mm -hmm. My hair. Let go as well. Let my hair. (laughs) go yes oh the, the cool costume change show is like, iconic yeah with like such a huge amount of uh, like not to be crass but like money like just like it's just seeing, just seeing like you know that that level of costume change and that level of production element I guess is what I'm trying to say yeah just like all of the magic that happens and the sort of you know, you have to maintain that world in some way. And all of the stuff that Elsa does is just miraculous. Like anytime, even when I was watching the show before I was going in, like every time the costume change happened, every time, you know, her glove drifted into the, uh, into the wind, you know, like, it's just so cool. It's so cool. But like, yeah, Disney has a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> those pup 
outfits are expensive. Like the I bet. Sven and Olaf are like tens of thousands of dollars for like a piece. It's, it's insane. crazy. My gay it's boyfriend crazy. was in the Aladdin tour and he Your gay boyfriend? Back, my gay boyfriend, not my show. Oh. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And right, just he took me back to sometimes. Up. Yeah, I want to make that very clear to the listeners. My yeah. gay boyfriend. Okay. Great, great. He took me backstage and would show me the costumes and would be like, yeah, there's like, you know, those are legitimately Swarovski crystals on that. Yeah. On all of these ensemble girls. Like there's 75 million Swarovski nine. crystals hand glued, glued. I don't know. Something. And but they're Elmer's, beautiful. With Elmer's. With Elmer. It's just... a glue stick. Like, yeah get it on there just pop it on there anyway anyway that it'll go on <laughs> lick it lick it <laughs> just like a stamp ladies and gentlemen that's what mm-hmm. we do with these. this is a real emerald diamond and we just uh, a little on the tongue and then, I'll, and then right onto your costume exactly <laughs> yes they fall off but we are crafty here at waltz crafty Walt at- is. <laughs> good old walty world <laughs> good old walty world um yeah. and then back to bring it on you got to work with the one, the only, Lynn Manuel Miranda. L M M. Did you know did before you know, Hamilton? Before B B B H. Before Hamilton. B-H. Did you know when you were working on the show? Were you like, oh, this dude is about to be the most famous person in the world? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. I I had I'd heard like inklings of Hamilton, like. It was, you know, when they're doing the mixtape and like really developing it. But I mean, he'd been developing that for so long. Um, but I knew like, because we saw In the Heights during, I think it was, I don't know if we were still on tour or rehearsing for tour. Yeah, I think we were rehearsing for tour about to go out on the road, but we were rehearsing in New York and um, we got to go see In the Heights. And I was just like, dang, these like melodies and these rhymes and how he forms words into songs like this is like surreal. <laughs> it, really, just, like, it really is. When, yeah. I saw, when I saw Hamilton, I remember just being like, and in the Heights, I just remember sitting there being like, whoa, it takes you like a couple seconds to realize what you just heard. And then you're like, did I just hear him rhyme that with that? Like that's, right. yeah, it's surreal is a good, good way to, to put it. Yeah, I'm just like, how do you even, how are you that smart? How are you that smart? How does that idea come into your head? It's wild. And then watching Freestyle Love Supreme, you see that like so many of them are able to just do it on the, literally on the spot. And you're like. Freestyle Love Supreme? That was the most thrilling theatrical experience I've seen in a while. Like the way. those, Or just on Hulu? No. I saw it live twice and it was, was it crazy? just as thrilling and a completely different show the second time. That is what's so cool. I, when I did the 50 shades musicals written by baby wants candy, who is like the musical improv, uh, you know, King, I guess of, of, as far as like musical improv comedy, I would say freestyle Love yeah. Supreme is, is like, has a hold on the rap side of it and the hip hop side of it. And mm-hmm. in, Baby Wants Candy is more like musical theater singers. And okay. it's like Nicole Parker, who was on Mad TV, and love Chris Grace, love, my love, friend, love. and Ashley Ward, who were in Fifty Shades with me. And they, I mean, literally, you could see a show on a Tuesday and then you go back on a Wednesday and you go back on a Thursday, and they're all wildly different. That's so different. different. And the the harmonies are so tight. The jokes are out of this world. You're like, how the hell did you think of that? just now it's i know that's the superpower i want i'm like if i could have a superpower it would be it would be that like and like how do you you not get nervous and like i can't even speak a scent like a regular sentence sometimes if i'm like jostled i'm like how does that just come to your mind and it rhymes and it's like a fantastic melody and like and then you're rapping and you land you land a joke like all of those things at once how wow i don't understand I can't even speak a regular sentence. I know it's like when you're at a bar having like a social conversation and you're like, what do I say right now? Like that's and they're the on normal a Broadway level. Stage. They're on a Broadway stage coming up it's with times like, for what they're saying. And uh, based on like someone being like red jacket. <laughs> and they're like, okay, 
I'm going to make an entire story that that's funny about this. It. Yeah, 100%. Good oh, job, I, Tim. Thank you yeah. so much. Are, <laughs> thank you so much. Are you am I, Freestyle Love Supreme? Am I Freestyle Love Supreme? If you guys are casting um, and listening to this podcast, <laughs> please. I bet they are. Up. I bet they are. They absolutely are. That was that was super super inspirational and super inspiring. And I think watching stuff like that, like Amy Schumer's doc and that doc, was really exciting to me because it, when theater comes back, it's going to come back so hardcore. It's going to be. Oh my god! Yeah. I mean, think about how badly you and I want to just go sit in a theater and watch a show. Like everybody feels like that. So even yeah. though we're all poor, like I think everyone's going to like throw their money back at the economy to just I hope. fucking get out of their houses like <laughs> i know i really believe we I trust, need I trust teatro we need it we need it we need teatro. but i was in new york a few weeks ago and it's 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 bubbling things are bubbling i did that little concert in times square like the we will be back thing and like was we just got to sing with each other and dance and be around each other again like it's getting warmer and people are getting vaccinated and like it's you can definitely tell it's oh that's exa- i just got chill i just got chill I know. that's really exciting yeah it's gonna, and it's gonna happen. the theater community is so cool part of why i really love doing this pod is it's really fun to talk to drag queens it's, it's fun to talk to comedians and it's so fun to talk to theater people because like what you said about just being able to like do lin manuel's show and then go see his show is like it really is that small and that tight knit mm-hmm. that like so many of us involved in the community know each other, even just from the proxy, you know, like even people who haven't yeah, been on the Broadway, closeness. Yeah. the closeness of, yeah, people who like go in and out of Times Square and Hell's Kitchen and go to bars and go to restaurants. Like, yeah. like I met you on the subway. Like it's so, it's such a beautiful thing that so many of us know each other and are so it's such a great tight knit, like actual friendly community, which I'm really hope comes back very soon. Yeah, no, and me too. And I was just doing, I was teaching a masterclass yesterday and somebody, or there was a Q and A and one of the kids was like, what's your favorite part about New York? And I was, that was my favorite thing. I was just like the fact that you can be at the South street seaport in the morning and then like pop up to Midtown, do your show, go out, you know, in hell's kitchen and see 75 people on the street that you know and it's just like everybody thinks that new york is this like big you know like everyone's everyone is so separate and it's no there's no neighborhoods and it's like but that it's so opposite of that especially in the theater world like and and all over the city it's like you you create your little pods and like you see people everywhere and it's always there's always a familiar place place a familiar place a familiar um, place yes yeah, so there's always a familiar face it's really easy to build community there and i think i really took that for granted now that i live in um hollywood because, now that I, live in... Uh, I live in hollywood <laughs> you don't see people out here like and uh, there's part of no? that that to be honest i really love like it's nice to just yeah. kind of check check out and like you know if I go to a coffee shop or I go on a hike or I go to the grocery store, I do not see anyone I know. And you can't yeah. do that in New York. If you get on the subway right. in New York, you're, you're going to see three people you know at yep. least. And, and probably someone you don't want to see. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Donald Trump. Donald Trump's <laughs> poor ass taking the subway. Yeah, now. on the subway. Yeah. Girl, girl get, get out of here. Oh, God. Can you imagine not being welcomed back to your own city? <laughs> being unwelcome in your own city no i can't honestly because it's me let's be honest no, yeah let's be honest. <laughs> let's be honest you are a very welcoming and and very easy to chat with stabbed myself and, my and you're and you do self that was instant karma yeah. <laughs> that was instant. that's what i get that is what i get that's what you get um before we had you on the pod i did about um two months of Elphaba interviews. So I think the Iconic. Fans, I know women who played Elphaba on Broadway and the stories were unbelievable. Wait, I think I'm going to go back and watch all of those. They're honestly really, really fun. Jessica Vosks is one of the most iconic things ever. She riffs so many times throughout it where I would be like, what's your, who's your favorite singer? And she would be like, Celine. And then she would just go for it. And I was like, this is 
you're giving me a full concert right now and I'm in absolute heaven. Her voice is perfect, I think. Like there's okay. nothing wrong with it. Not a single it's thing wrong. Perfect. It's so it's not fair. It's really not. And honestly, she owes the community an apology for those of the she rest does. of us who try. She does. What the hell? She does owe us an apology. Um, I had Jackie Burns on. Oh, my girl. Your girl. My girl, um, Jackie. If then, and that was so, so much fun. And I think I would be remiss and the fans would be angry at me if I didn't ask you the two most important words to me in the English language, which are Edina Menzel. <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. The question is... That's the question. Is Edina, Edina Menzel. Edina Menzel. Edina everything, Menzel. everything, the, the, a queen, the greatest, what's the, the tea? All the things, the kindest, most generous, down-to-earth, famous queen there is like she's so cool just... i was just gonna say is she cool she seems very fucking cool she's so cool and she's just like i don't know just for the career that she's had you think she's not gonna be cool or at least i did and i was just like she just wants to be one of us and like be the theater gal that she has always been but has, you know, obviously flourished in other realms of entertainment, but that whole process was amazing, you know, because obviously she was surrounded by Anthony Rapp and Jen Kalala and LaShawns and all these other heavy, heavy hitters. And um, it was just a masterclass all around every night, just watching them. And, and yeah, she's so, so silly. Many. Like she loves to like prank and like, just like, she would crack up all the time on stage and like <laughs> she just gave it no shit. Oh, sorry, honestly, can I curse on your podcast? You can absolutely curse. And honestly, okay. F. Ash F. Ashton Kutcher, give punked reboot to Adina Menzel. Yes. <laughs> I want to see Adina Menzel pranking people. Right. 100%. Well, I mean, I I'm not I wouldn't say like scare pranks, but like on stage, she like something would happen and she would just lose it. Like she had no ability to hold her like church giggles <laughs> and on, on a Broadway stage. And that was just, that provided for the most laughter at all times. We had such a great time. That was such a good group of people. And, um, icon. I mean, you know, what she was at the, at the helm. Yeah. Yeah. And that is so cool. It's so nice to hear because there's a version of that that could have gone a different way, right? Like if you're that level of famous, I mean, that show was really like her big Broadway comeback after a while of being away and being in, you know, movies. And yeah. she could have like really, there are many of a famous celebrity who has to lead a big project like that and kind of crack under the pressure and just get so stressed and angry. And it's really cool to hear that she was just kind of like, you know what, y'all? Let's have some fun. Yeah, she was like, this is my show. We're going to have fun. If Even though we're we talking about death and divorce. And oh. <laughs> Are you a Liz or a Beth? Oh my gosh. <laughs> no one's ever asked me that. Glasses or no glasses? <laughs> Red or blue? <laughs> um, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard. Maybe. I think I'm a Liz. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. We're both. <laughs> we're, we're both. Just kidding. We're both. Liz is the one that chooses um, love? Or, or Liz is the one that chooses career? I don't really remember. I don't either. <laughs> that was like seven years ago, Tim. But it oh, might happen. Don't, it might, don't put this in the might, recording. It might happen again. We could cut that. We could cut that out. It might happen again oh. because we're always starting over. We, we are always starting over. Every brand new story. Uh, we're always starting out with the end in doubt. With the that, end I love that doubt. song so much. Speaking it's of so good songs, I love. It, I sung it a so few good. times. Or we we honored uh, Tom Kit at a gala for Broadway Dreams Foundation. I work with a few for last year. Last year. Two years, or I don't know, before Corona, 
you understand. 2014. 75 years ago. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> and I sang Always Starting Over for um, for Tom. And I was like, this song is so good. It really it's, is. And it's also an alto's dream because like, it's like meaty and like, yes. ugh, so fun to sing. So fun to title sing. Of, title of app, an alto's dream. An alto dream. <laughs> An alto dream. Yeah. Uh, who are your alphabas? And by that I mean, who do, who have you seen as alphabas? Oh my gosh, I've seen so many alphabas. <laughs> I've seen. That's what I want to hear. Always on the I, <laughs> Anytime someone's like, "You want to go to Wicked?" I'm like, "Yes." One hundred. Um. Okay. I've seen Lindsay Mendez. Tag. Obviously, Gorge. Um, I've seen, uh, Shosh, my girl Shosh, uh, Shoshana. Okay. Yep. I've seen, it's, it, now it's kind of hard. It's like, in my mind, I'm like, did I see them or did I see <laughs> videos of them? Because the I've been to the show right? so many, yeah. Like, did I, I've been to so many. And there have been 8,000 so at this videos. point. I know. I saw. Would you? Would you ever want to? Would you ever want to play Alphaba? No, I would never want to play Alphaba. I want to be Glinda very badly. Oh hell yeah! You'd yeah. be a great Glinda. Thank you. Um, no, I would not want to be Alphaba. I want to do might... it for like. I want to do it one one show, one maybe show two. <laughs> yeah, or maybe two, just so I could you know clear out all the. You fix all the mistakes from the first one and then have like a really good one under my belt. Here's what I see for you. You get cast as Glinda. You're doing it. A, you're about five months into the run. All the other alphabas in the building get sick. And they the, get and laryngitis. The universal swings. And the universal swings. And all that's left is you and your Glinda track and then the Glinda understudy. And they say, we're going to have to cancel the show. We don't have anyone that can play the role. And you say, I'll do it. I know the part. I, I can do it. And you get to do it matinee and then at night. And then the next day everybody comes back and you're like, great. I did it. I did I did my two show off of Well, I don't want to do I don't want to do a matinee and a night. I just want to do a night and then another night. Okay, I'll I'll work that into the fantasy. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's a Thursday, Friday situation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's healthy again by Saturday. Exactly. Exactly. In this dreamscape, I don't want to do a matinee too. I don't want to do a two show day. <laughs> not even in this daydream do I want to do a two show day. A two show day no. is Alphaba. That's going to go ahead and be the rudest thing I've ever heard. So rude. That show that needs to be a six show a week role. 100. If they do it for Avita, they should be doing it for Alphaba. Right. The girls. Let's start a petition, change.org. Let's get, let's get, this is the most important thing going on in the world right now. We yeah. need a petition. Number one thing. <laughs> Alphaba. Number one important thing. Um, Speaking of most important thing, question of the pod, what were your slumber parties like growing up? I mean, they mostly consisted of choreographing dances to NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears, um, Obvi, Obvi. Um, Just, yeah, lots of choreographed dances that I wrote, sometimes I wrote my brothers in too. (laughs) Oh my god. Well, Did they love it? They or were they like, Ryan? They're, they're probably like, what are you doing? Like, leave me alone. Um, <laughs> no, just lots jams? of choreography. I mean, Overprotected by Britney Spears. Love. I don't need nobody telling me just what I want to, what, 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 what I'm going to do about my destiny. Also, another Alto's dream. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Backstreet Boys was my first concert, so literally their entire catalog. Um, I'll be the one. Do you remember that song? I'll be the one. I'll oh, be I the one. I had I was on drill team for like one year in the seventh grade, and we did a flag routine to that song. And there's like a big moment in the, in the song where it's like, you know, like it's like a stop time, and then a, <laughs> we like throw the flag. <laughs> Speaking of gay things. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Flags in the air. Just, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Whoa. Okay, so you're, what you're telling me is that you're going to be in Cadet Kelly, the musical. Um, if I'm not, there's a problem. <laughs> no, I don't think I was very good at flag throwing. Seems I was like the hardest. Certainly thing in the world. fine. I was probably certainly fine, but I mean, there are baby <laughs> flags. <laughs> I'm I'm just so confused. That uh, throwing a stick around baton that seems hard to me. Putting right. a, a weighted um thing that could also get more weighted by the wind on mm-hmm. top of that and twirling it. That's going to be the hardest thing in the world to me. Yes. It's like curing like the hardest diseases in the world. Playing alphabet, a f- flag twirler, flag throwing. That's yep. the hardest thing. Mount Everest is climbing Mount Everest is fourth or fifth, I, I do believe. Yes. Oh my gosh! Well, that is oh wild. My. That is really, really wild. Also, just go like this if we need to cut this out. If you're not allowed to talk about it, but I heard a rumor that you were in the workshop of the Britney Spears musical. I was in the workshop of the Britney Spears musical. Was that fierce to hear that? Britney it was musical? so fierce. Yeah, yeah, it was so fierce. When I heard that was happening, I was like, "Excuse me, they're they're turning my icon, my her her songs, her music in, into a full Broadway musical." They sure are, and it was it's a it's really freaking funny. It's oh. really good. You're gonna love it. I cannot wait were you were you in the one my friend Preston Sadler did like a bunch of them as well oh my god he's were he, the best were you there the day that she came I was ah! <laughs> I was she was like five feet from me did, were you were you sweating were you freaking yes. out I would be fr- seeing that the whole time kind of the whole time look because we did that Nova. workshop in in the west side theater um so like we were up on the stage and like the audience is so close to you and the whole I just played the entire show to her I was just like watching her I was like Whoa. <laughs> I was like I need to make full eye contact the entire time <laughs> oh my god just doing your a full routine right to Britney yeah the whole thing and she loved just it literally singing work bitch to her to Britney herself <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that is wild yes she loved it she loved it she was just like ear to ear smile the entire time okay that makes me so happy I don't even know what to do you know I'm like die 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 hard like she was my first concert I I can't I I opened my stand-up show with the VMAs baby one more time um into the NSYNC dance, you know what I'm talking about? When they do the yes. remix and NSYNC is secretly hiding in the in their chairs and then they jump up from the, and they're like, dun, 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 dun. I just- I need to revisit I, that video. It's so good. She is dancing her butthole off. <laughs> She's dancing her butthole off. She is She's such got no a butthole anymore. Oh when they're like, I saw her in here. Vegas. <gasps> Was it everything? Yes. I'm yes, so sad I never saw that one. I saw the circus tour and I saw Oops, I did it again when I was in the eighth grade. Honey, I'll never forget it. It rained on her at the mm. end and I was screaming, <laughs> screaming. There was a 50-year-old woman in front of me who pulled out one of those lighters and was like slowly just waving the lighter. Not a lighter. Not a lighter. I was like, this is not Woodstock, mama. It's this, she, is, <laughs> a, she is doing boys. Wrong crowd. Right <laughs> wrong crowd. Wrong crowd. Wrong crowd. Wrong She's tunes. like, one, two, three. <laughs> She's like, lighter, lighter. <laughs> lighter in the air. <laughs> and then, of course, the, when it was appropriate, don't let me be the last to know, lighter down. I was like, girl, you're really missing your mark right now. Oh, my gosh. Wait, I was listening to a, because I just got a new car, and so I've been driving a lot. Um, I saw that one. To, yes, thank you, to the set. So I've had these long drives. So one of my Spotify playlists I was listening to was a throwback. And what came on the other day that I was like, this is an underappreciated Britney song. It was, oh, um, I was born to make you happy. That that song is a bop. Ryan, when I tell but you also, every like, single day of my life, I think about how that was never a single. Because right. it should have been. It should have been. That's on 100%. the Baby One Time album. And it is so good it, i bought yes. yes 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 you. a controversial opinion it should have been that and not from the bottom of my broken heart which is still a very good song i but agree i agree Born to make you happy is lit. there's a couple there's like two other songs that maybe one more time that was like mm, this clearly yeah. almost made it as a hit because that yeah, but also is- like 
kind of sad. Like, who are you born? I was born to make you happy. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I, but, I've never been so one good. to like really deeply listen to the lyrics. Di- deep dive into, <laughs> deep dive into the lyric. It's we more might, the, we might have... the, mood, the vibe mm-hmm. that it gives me. Yes, I, I overstand. Let's, let's be honestly, it's, it, let's be honestly, it's not um, Shakespeare poetry, soda pop, watching you can't stop. Mm, right. You're soda pop. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I, I return to one, two, three. <laughs> Was Dear Diary in it? Dear Diary, Mm-mm. today I saw a boy. That song. <laughs> not, that song not, it, but life. maybe there's still time. There's still time. There's still time. It could still happen. But Speaking still of could make it still in. time, you and I are running out of time. So oh, uh, no. We, uh, we have to move on to this, my favorite segment of the pod called, wait, let's have fun. Oh my gosh, that segment, sounds so fun. In this segment, we have a little fun. We're going to play some slumber party games. Oh but my God. Do, what, if we were at a slumber party, what YouTube video would you show me? If we were at a slumber party, I would put um, on just like, you know how you can find those playlists? I would hit start on the news bloopers are you a fan of news bloopers yes so those entertain me for hours agreed hours could just you know my on you, you know laugh. my andrew berlin my bestie and roommate our dear in dear New York, friend our dear dear friend Love. we can just turn those on and die for hours it's they never not so good and there's good. always new ones there are always new ones the obviously the most iconic one I think the the one that we all know is, and uh, he was gay, blind. He was blind. <laughs> <laughs> that one is so good. I mean, there is just there's so much. The 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 guy who the bug flies into his mouth, like, ugh. Some of those things that they make those newscasters do are <laughs> so mean. It really is wild. Like sometimes you're like, is that person really sitting on the lip of a volcano? Yes, they right. are. Right. <laughs> the ones who are in a hurricane, they're like, no, we're here in uh, <laughs> the Outer Banks in North Carolina. And a cow is flying they're... past their face. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. like, get them out of there. Get, get them, them out of there. there. They're not on like a chain or anything being, yeah, being then, held there. They could fly right away, poltergeist style. Right. And then it cuts to the whoever it gets to be in the studio and they're just like, oh, Mark. <laughs> oh, gosh. And back to. <laughs> Hope you have your galoshes on, Mark. Looks pretty right. wet over there. Anyway. Oh, my gosh. And also the one where they're, it's literally ice out and they're like, yeah, we're just going for a run. And she runs away and eats it. <laughs> Have you seen that one? <laughs> no, that sounds so good. They're like, they're like, wow, you guys are pretty brave for being out here in this weather to go for a run. And it's like, uh, I think it's a husband and wife. And they're like, oh yeah, we're major runners. Uh, we run in this all the time. Uh, we're No, we're not too worried about it today. And not even five seconds later, she runs off in camera or on camera behind them and slips and falls. Like, and <laughs> like, you can't write That's this stuff. Awesome. You can't. It's so tough. good. Where can the people follow you if they want to find you? You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ryan Reds, R Y A N N R E D S. Excuse yeah. me. I had something in my throat when I said that, but it kind of <laughs> sounded sultry. So that was nice. Oh, yeah. It was very uh, sticky shoes, my sticky <laughs> shoes, baby buffet when she has a cold. <laughs> Um, yes. thank you so much for joining us Ryan and you can follow me at tmurray06 on all platforms and if you want to hear the slumber party games uh, this section head on over to my Patreon where Ryan and I played some Mary F. Kill uh, thank you everybody bye, bye.